we went somewhere where I never thought that we would go. <laughs> where was that? We went to P.F. Chang's. What is the P.F.? Is it P.F. Chang's or P.F. Chang? And what does P.F. stand for? I don't know, but I know when I was when I was a kid, we always said it was Preston Fong. <laughs> <laughs> we went to P.F. Chang's because... You had a gift card for like over 10 years. And we're like, we got to use this thing because we're just holding on to it and we might lose it. Are you sure it was 10 years? I feel like you're embellishing the story now. It was before we got married, which was six years, about six years ago. So I just added four more years. Wow, six years. Anyway, um, so we had a gift card, $25, and I signed up for the birthday rewards, you know, to get double the, you know, the good stuff. And then so we got a free meal as well. And we were able to purchase more because of the gift card. So we went yesterday. We went to the Chino Hills shops. And I I think for the entire time I have lived in Chino Hills, I never went to the P.F. Chang's there. Yeah, it was my first time too. The inside reminded me of when we went to Shanghai Disneyland. Was it Shanghai Disneyland or was it Hong Kong Disneyland? One of those. And the aesthetic was like very Asian inspired. There's a huge statue of a horse in the front of the restaurant. And when you go inside, there's like giant lanterns and like this Chinese gold emblem at the front register. Mm-hmm. It was like a or fancy at the reception place. Asian. I was kind of embarrassed to go in. Were you? Were you embarrassed? Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, here we are in the San Gabriel Valley and we drive <laughs> to Chino Hills to eat at P.F. Chang's. Now, we didn't eat there. We got takeout, which was a brilliant move because I would feel really awkward just sitting there and eating. Is this racist? I'll say that. Anyway, I was pretty surprised, though. I, the food was pretty good. Yeah, so <laughs> tell me what you liked about it. We got the lettuce wrap, um, Szechuan beef, and long life noodles. <laughs> It's called li- long life noodles. I forgot what it's called, but I think that's how they call it in you know the SUV Chinese restaurants. But it was pretty good. I mean, it had its own like American flavors in there, but I enjoyed it. I wouldn't go again. I don't think we need to. P.F. Chang's China Bistro is an Asian themed U.S. casual dining restaurant chain founded in 1993 by Paul Fleming and Philip Chiang. Is this the same Fleming as the Steakhouse Fleming? Yes. Oh. Paul Fleming <laughs> is an American restaurant, re- restaurateur, restaurateur. Oh, like entrepreneur. But nope. restaurateur, <laughs> yeah. I mean, he he has developed a number of restaurant chains, including P.F. Chang's China Bistro, Fleming's Prime Steakhouse and Wine Bar, Payway Asian Diner. Oh, wait, wait, the, the other Tejas guy's name is... Grills and Paul Martin's American Grill. The other guy's name is Paul? The other guy's name is Philip Chiang. Oh, P. Oh, okay. So Philip and Fleming. Maybe that's a P and the F. No, no, no. The first guy is Paul Fleming. The second guy is Philip Chiang. Oh, maybe I get it. Maybe, like, <laughs> it's... Okay, here, here it says. P.F. Chang's is the namesake of Paul Fleming and Philip Chiang whose surname was simplified to Chang. I'm kind of offended that, that they simplified his last name to Chang, but I mean, it's not like me, you know, like... Well, I'm ready to move on. <laughs> I mean... <laughs> would you go back again? No. What no. if you had a gift card? I would go back again if I had a gift card. We also have to use the gift cards to CPK and either, I think, Maggiano or Chili's. When we were dating, I remember going to Maggiano with you and your family. What? In Chino Hills. There's a Maggiano's in Chino Hills? There is not a Maggiano's okay, in Chino Hills. Okay, can you look Hills. it up really quick? I think you're thinking about Fazoli's. <laughs> I am. <laughs> it was a very different. Uh, yeah, it was Fazoli. It's okay. It's all the same to me. Uh, birthday boba. Yes. So a month ago, I planned... To sign up for all these free meals. <laughs> and I made sure I was connected to the five stars account. Where you know you had to insert your birthday and everything. And then 
a couple of days ago, I got like this mass text from like 10 boba shops telling me, happy birthday, here's a free drink. So for the next seven days, we can get a free drink at these boba places. Okay, so I planned it out. Today, we're going to get tea maru. The next day will be gong cha and then tea for you and then bon appetit. And then on my actual birthday, it'll be 10 rins. And we could decide how many 10 rin places we really want to go to. And then I could go to Cafe Dolce, but I don't really want to go to LA for a drink. And then the last one is Dingleberries. Oh, we can also go to Drip, but that one doesn't expire until like a month. Yes. Out of all those places, which one would you consider your favorite? And which one would you consider mm. your least favorite? I would say Bon Appetit is a good place to study and to get a drink. Um, my favorite as of now would be maybe Tea Maru. Like they're like ones where they make their own boba. But I'm going to Bon Appetit next week during my Just Retreat. Oh yeah, I want to talk about Just Retreat. But before we talk about Just Retreat, I want to make a side topic here. Sure. There's a new boba place actually around here in San Gabriel Valley. It's called Mopo... Nope. It's called Mafu to... What's it called? Bo. It's called Bopo Mofo. Bopo Mofo is a new boba shop opened by Phil and E. Wingus. Phil who? I don't know E. Wingus's <laughs> name, but on Instagram, he's E. Wingus. But I think it's our friend's friend, brother. Anyway. Oh, Phil who? You know, Wang Fu Phil. Of course. I think. I think. Anyway, they opened this new boba shop. It's pretty cool from the outside. Um, I think they take pride in not no, not using any syrups and using all natural ingredients, which is cool. We haven't gone there yet. It's been open for like over a month. I've been waiting to go there, you know, just to try it. It has not been open for over a month. Okay, yeah, soft opening. They didn't okay, do a grand Okay, that doesn't count open. as an opening. They were That's open. like a pre- They were there for over a month. I don't think soft opening counts as an, a real opening. Like I consider anyway, the, actual, the they official were, start date as anyway, the opening. It's open. Now it is, yes. Yeah, and I've been waiting to go for a couple of weeks now. Yeah, yes, it's, it's been a couple open of for, weeks. No, it's, because no, no. we had opportunities to go for a couple of weeks now. Okay, anyways, it's been open for a couple of weeks now. Officially open for a couple of weeks now. And there, there's something mentally blocking me from going. Like, I want to go. Yes, I want to go. But there's something that's preventing me from, like, going. Like, I feel like I need to be, like, mentally prepared, like, a little psyched, like, hyped up before I go. It's just a drink place. I know it's just a drink place, but it's, like, a special drink place. If anything, I just want to get in and out. Like, I don't want to talk to you, Phil. (laughs) I mean, I want to talk to them, but, like... I don't. It's weird. (laughs) I just want my drink. I just want to try it as if it was any other drink. They want to be treated... Like any other boba shop. No, they don't. <laughs> there is no way they want to be treated like any other boba shop. There's a reason why he, he's making sure that everybody knows that it's his place. Anyway, we're we're gonna go, right? Oh, Tuesday, we're taking a break. Maybe we should go Tuesday. I don't to know. To fill I'm... in the free birthday boba drinks. Uh, that that would make the most sense. It would be fitting. I mean, I wanna go as a normal customer. But then there's another layer to it, which is like, oh, I want to go because it's it's Philip Wang's place and E. Wangus's place. But then again, I also want to go. His name's Eric. Eric. And I think. But then the other layer to it is I want to go because as previous boba shop owners, like I kind of want to see what's new and fresh and current out there. And they're the newest, freshest, most current boba place. Right. But yeah. if I wait too long, then they won't be, you know? So I, gu- I guess <laughs> it makes deal. sense to, to do it now. I don't know. I'm just thinking I got- about it too much. I don't want to go anymore. What? I'm kidding. Anyway, someday we will go. It's really close by. It's like super close by. I, I didn't expect it to be this close by. Yeah, we pass by it like once a week for the past two months. <laughs> uh, yes, we did pass by it for the past two months, but it was not open until recently so even though we passed by it's not like we could have gone in i think the thing that is mentally preventing me from being ready to go to bopo mofo is that 
they're famous and there's a lot of hype surrounding this place and I'm a little self-conscious to meet a celebrity and I'm a little I don't want to be disappointed and to be like kind of in that scene do you think that's silly yeah I was thinking I was thinking of that word but you know if that's how you feel that's how you feel it's just kind of silly but if that's how you feel that's how you feel you're just gonna have to get over it because we're gonna go okay so tell me about your birthday retreat so I plan to take three days off of work to focus on my own creative goals and on my own creative projects. So I'm not going to do any of my part-time jobs or any of my freelance gigs. And I am going to just get my stuff organized and focus on what I want to do with my own projects. I don't really have a plan quite yet, but I am hoping that within those three days, I will figure out a plan, figure out how I'm going to do things, organize my workflow and all my paperwork, just getting my creative life together and accomplishing the projects I want to do. Um, I think I shared this before, like there's just a lot of things I want to do. There's like design stuff, there's interior design, there's party stuff like I'm interested in, but I still still don't know how to focus on all of that even though those are all my interests I have an idea of what I want to do to just kind of merge all these things I love to do I'm just trying to figure out how I am going to do that so I think within these three days I hope to accomplish that so you're gonna basically just take three days to figure out what you're gonna do and make a plan yeah yeah so I'll go to a coffee shop maybe for like six to eight hours and then after that I just come home and then relax, but yeah. Oh, so you're going to be close by. Yeah, I'll be close by. I'll be be around Alhambra. Mm-hmm. Well, Jess, I'm glad that you're going to take some time and do some work. Thanks. I'm looking forward to it too. Last week, we went to a Lee Association dinner. Now, this is something that I haven't done since I was in junior high school. And I think I only went there because they were giving out like scholarships It's not like I did anything special or important. I think they just handed out to anybody who has the last name of Lee. And so anyways, this Saturday, we went to a Lee Association dinner. How did you feel? Uh, I was excited to go. I haven't been to one, I guess, in a long time. I guess when I was little, I did. But I was interested to see what a Lee Association banquet could be like. And there's a lot of stuff. There's a lot going on. Wait, you went to a Lee Association dinner when you were younger? No, like my own family like a Fong association. And was it what you thought it would be? Mm, Not exactly. I knew it would be like a banquet type. I didn't know there would be lion dancing and performances. Did you enjoy the performances? I enjoyed the performances on a level of, oh, this is nice that people are doing things and that there's entertainment. Your grandma sang. She did sing, yes. My grandma loves to sing. Her favorite song is Silent Night. I do not think she knows that it's about Jesus. Oh, my favorite part was our party favor gifts. They were Lee Kum Ki sauce, mushroom sauce. I thought it was funny. The vice president of the Lee Kum Ki company, Mr. Lee, was actually (laughs) there and he gave a speech. I don't recall what his speech was about. But I just remember he said, I am the vice president from Lee Kum Ki Sauce. And that was enough. So that was last week. Um, Maybe two weeks ago, we went to this Disney 90s night. Thanks for planning that. How did you hear about this event? I saw it on my Facebook ad and I took the bait. So what drew me to this event, which was from 6 p.m. to 1 a.m., was that they gave out free fanny packs. So I'm like, I want a fanny pack. We're going to go. Disney 90s night. It was like a 90s themed night at Disneyland. And so what that meant was that there were a lot of characters from 90s movies or from 90s Disney Channel era walking around that you could take pictures. There were other photo ops. They had like a special fireworks. They had dance areas with 90s music and 90s themed food. It was an enjoyable experience. But yes, the highlight was definitely the fanny pack. There was a lot of people waiting in line to take photos, but we didn't want to take it because it was like an hour wait. 
So we just did rides instead. But I enjoyed it. We also participated in a speakers tournament at church. Now, we were not the speakers. We were the judges. They separated you and me, Jess. Mm -hmm. I was downstairs with Joyce and Vanessa. You were upstairs with Gabe and Uncle Ivan. Yeah, and we each had six students, and they all spoke on various topics. How did you judge them? Well, this was the first... This was the first time they were competing this year. So after this, if they pass, they'll go to the second one and the third one. Because this is the first round of competition, we wanted all of them to make it at least to the second round. And, you know, it's, it's like a friendly competition. It's just for them to kind of talk about the topic and study the Bible and be versed in what they're saying. So we wanted to make sure they all passed. But I knew that... The other two judges on my side, they were going to judge a little bit harder, but still give them a passing score. So I was supposed to. I don't know. No, I wasn't supposed to, but it made me feel better judging on the easier side. But I did give harsh notes. Okay, not harsh notes. I gave a lot of notes on the speakers. What kind of notes did you give them? I gave notes, just like questions that I would have. For example, like if someone talked, about their testimony, the Christian testimony, I would comment saying, I would be curious to know a little bit more about how you were before Christ or a little bit more about who Christ is in your testimony. So you judged them more on the content of their speech versus their actual presentation. Yeah, I did judge on the content more. See, I was judging them like kind of purely based off of their presentation. Like on my comments to them, I told them, oh, Try varying your talking speed or try talking louder or softer or make use of the stage or try using different hand motions. That's how I'd judge them. I think you and the other two that you were judging with, I think you guys were the easy ones. You guys judged easy. Yeah, we we were the easy ones. So it's out of 100 points. And I think our average score was like 90, whereas your average scores were 70. (laughs) Something like that. But I actually gave I actually gave all my speakers like at least a 90. I judged pretty easily, which is fine, right? Because like I balance things out. But I you know, I gave the notes on content. Yeah, I, I think it's I think that's a fair judging there. Although I, I don't know. I guess if you really I mean I, I think if we were really being harsh, then yeah, some of them might not have passed, but they said the goal is to pass them. <laughs> I'm not saying they were bad, though. It was good. No, they were I was just, good. They were I was good. just commenting on things I was I would be curious about, not saying that they should do it. It was just things that I would like to hear. And I think they did well. No, I think it's good. I think it's good that you give them questions to think about and how they can improve. And I think it's good for you and me as creatives to also get questions and to think about what we're doing and how we can improve. And so that's why I think it's good for us to have questions on this podcast. Right, right. We actually have a lot of questions to answer, but I I am thankful that our listeners are sending us questions. So please keep them coming. Let's try to answer one today. And it kind of ties in to the theme of what I wanted to talk about anyways. So it's it's quite fitting. The question is, how many of your creative goals died out slash actually came to fruition? What made the difference? You know, thinking about it, I feel like I don't have a lot of projects. I think it seems like I do, but I think all these projects that I do have just happens to be for other people. I think that's why I'm excited about my retreat. It's like I'm working on my personal projects that I want to accomplish. I mean, there are a couple that I do start off on my own, like that book. I I remember mentioning that I wanted to make a book and I wouldn't say that is dead I would just say it's a work in progress I think a lot of projects that I do come up with they are just a work in progress and they are just they're still on my mind but if I don't have any motivation or excitement towards it it's just going to stand still so unless I do have a reasoning or when I do feel inspired to complete my book then I can always go back to it But I would like to say that hasn't died yet. So the main thing would be motivation. I need to be personally motivated to see it through. 
So what kind of motivation are you talking about? Are you talking about like financial motivation? Are you talking about like, oh, this is like a mm-hmm. lifelong dream for you to get it done? Or like, oh, there's people that depend mm-hmm. on me to get this thing done? Like what kind of motivation is it? I need to see an end to it. If someone said, hey, there's this art festival coming up in a couple months. I am signing up for it. Do you want to sign up for it? And if I say yes, and if I have that deadline, then I'm going to finish a project. I'm going to bring something into fruition. So deadlines motivate you. Yeah. And accountability. Knowing that someone else knows I'm doing a project and would like to see it through, I think that's my motivation. It's kind of sad. It's kind of sad that it, it sounds like I need to do things for other people. But I think that helps me to finish my projects. So number one would be personal motivation and number two would be designated deadlines. So for me, I think I definitely have more creative goals fulfilled versus unfulfilled. And I think it might be the same for you. Like I have very narrow goals and I have them in mind exactly what I want to accomplish. I want to add on to your list. I agree with everything that she said. Personal motivation having dedicated deadlines. And I think the third thing would be having time to complete a project. Having a lot of time for me is helpful. Now, I know we talked about having deadlines, but sometimes those deadlines can stretch way into the future. So for instance, one of my creative goals is to put all of my original worship songs on the internet. I want to record them and I want to put them on Spotify. Now, I know this is going to take a long time to do it because I need to get people to help me. I need to arrange the songs and I need to have time to produce them. Now, this goal, I think I'm going to stretch it all the way out to a year, but I'm going to put a deadline on it. I'm going to put March 30th, 3.30 as the deadline for this goal. And so even though, yeah, there's a deadline on it, I have enough time to accomplish this goal. That's good that you can work with a long deadline. Like for me, if I see something that needs to be accomplished or that should be accomplished in a year, like it doesn't motivate me enough though. Mm. My projects have to be quick. It has to be, it has to be a quick turnaround, like maybe the longest six months. I'm okay with long deadlines because I feel like some projects you just need to have that much time. That's true. I just don't like it lingering in my head. That's fair. That's fair. I think it's the lingering. The fourth thing I want to add on to the list is having the right tools to accomplish the project. You can have a lot of dreams and a lot of goals, but if you don't have the necessary tools to accomplish it, there's no way that it's going to get done. What kind of tools do you need though? Okay, so for music stuff... I need instruments, obviously, right? Like I need my guitars, I need a keyboard, but things that people don't normally think about for music production would be an actual computer that can handle all of the recording. Um, There's a lot of programs and a lot of plugins that I need. Um, I also need gear, like I need microphones and I need all of the cables, maybe amps. So there's a lot of tools that I need to just have at my disposal in order to accomplish what I want to do. What would you say to someone if they wanted to do these things, but they didn't have the means for these tools? I think that you can use what you have. And so like, I didn't always have all this gear before, you know, like I, I, I was really like limited before, like I didn't have nice mics and I didn't have nice guitars, but when I was still learning how to produce music, like I just used whatever I had. Like I borrowed gear from Warren. I just downloaded whatever was free and available to use for um, programs on my computer. You just find ways to make it work. And maybe that's not your ultimate vision, but at least you're heading in a direction. And eventually over time, you can accomplish and have the tools to make your dreams come to a reality eventually. I agree. And I think the reason why I like graphic design is that the tools that I need is all digital and it's all on my computer. I don't need to necessarily have 
physical items in order to do what I want to do. And I think that fits our minimal lifestyle. So I like that. (laughs) Okay, I have one more item that I want to add to the list, and that is to get help from other people. Just you and me, we, we do like to work by ourselves because we have very strong opinions about how things should get done. Yeah, it's very hard for me to collaborate with people. It's, it's my pride. I, I'm just very selfish. Well, It's hard for me. I, I'm the same. I'm the same. But in order to reach your goals, sometimes we need the help of others. So for instance, when I am putting music up online, sometimes I need graphics. Like for Earth to Jupiter, I needed like a band logo or whatever, right? And so, yeah, I can just make one up on my own in my own kind of ghetto, careless way. But when I ask you for help, I know that I'll get something respectable and something that will last for a long time. Having others help you can also accomplish your goal and see your vision come to fruition. Well, that's a good example because you're collaborating in a way where you're using, you're asking for someone's help that has a different background than you. Mm, That's true. Like a different skill set. Yeah. But what about like collaborating with someone who also does music? Well, I I think that for me, when it comes to music, the way that I've been able to exercise retaining control and the direction and the vision of my projects is by being the producer. And so I'm not always singing on my projects. I'm not always playing music on my projects, but... I ask my friends to collaborate and I can still shape the outcome. And I found joy in like being able to share the project together with others. Mm -hmm. I know that doesn't work for every single project, but I think for me, I just like to collaborate. Like I like to collaborate with music and podcasting. Podcasting has been a very fun medium where I get to work with other people to accomplish and make something. Thanks for all the questions. We hope to answer more in the future. And if you have any other questions for us, just let us know. Oh, but back to collaboration. When you and me, Aaron and me, Jess, collaborate, it's pretty difficult. What? 